Thank you for joining us. This is Orbit Network Training, Section 2, Connecting Orbit to Software. This section of Orbit Training is going to discuss taking the Orbit Network and connecting it to a software package on your computer, whether it be building your own software package from the ground up or connecting it to an existing package, uh, such as LabVIEW or QC Calc. And this is divided into four sections. Section A, we'll, we will just discuss um, installing the Orbit support pack and then giving an overview of a key package you get with it, the Orbit suite. Um, included will be connecting an interface module, reviewing some of the software utilities, and also a review of the available programming examples. Part B is where we run one of the software utilities called the Orbit library test. Uh, this includes a demonstration of different operation modes. Part C is how you update an Orbit module. Um, every Orbit module has firmware, just like computer has software, that can be updated um, out in the field. And then Part D is a programming example with LabVIEW software that's done by one of our application engineers. Uh, we do recommend that you have a programming background for some of these examples. Should be noted too, there are other Orbit training sections. Uh, section one again is Orbit Basics, where you build an Orbit stack, choose an interface module, as well as a power supply interface module. Section three is connecting to a protocol interface module, which connects to PLCs. And section four is connecting to Solartron wireless products. It should be noted too, there's already training on Orbit GCS software, which is an existing software package uh, built to run with Orbit. Uh, the Excel add-in software, where again, you can take an Orbit stack and then connect it directly into an Excel spreadsheet, as well as the digital input output module. Um, for these training videos and others, you can just go to uh, solartronmetrology.com and then click on the YouTube link. Now, first thing before we get started is the software compatibility. Um, the Orbit software drivers are basically built for the Microsoft.NET platform. Uh, it's compatible with 32-bit and 64-bit systems. So it's built and tested for Windows 10, but it should run on Windows 7 and upward. Now we're just going to review a couple of key terms. First is the Orbit library, and this is a list of all the commands for the Orbit network. And uh, there's a full list in the manuals as well as software examples. Now, the Orbit library is an object-oriented design for .NET. And that's where, so the Orbit server, its primary object for it. And then you have a network object, which is typically an interface module, such as the USB interface. And then you have the modules object, which is just an orbit module. So an orbit module would be, you know, digital probes, third party modules, or the linear encoder. So basically, each object has a set of functions or methods that are used to initiate specific actions and a set of parameters or properties that can be read or set. You know, some other key terms are notify add. This is a way of identifying a probe or sensor on an orbit network by pressing the tip of the probe. The network then assigns it an address. Now, another term is called ping. That's when a command given by the interface module where all the probes are notified and the addresses are automatically assigned. So something much quicker. Now, one thing we wanted to review real quick, and this was done in the orbit basics section, are just the network speeds and the read modes. Now first, Orbit Network operates at three different network speeds. Uh, standard, which is about 187.5 kilobytes a second. High, which is 1.5 megabytes a second. Then ultra high, which is 2.25 megabytes per second. Um, high and ultra high are what are typically used for dynamic readings. And we will have a demonstration of this. Now there are five types of read modes. First, there is static, which is the most popular one. Um, or it is also called basic. Here, a command is sent from the computer and the module send back one reading at a time. Uh, this is best for static measurements and it's still very quick feedback. You're talking about just microseconds in between each reading. Then you have dynamic. Now this is high speed synchronized readings. Now this is up to 3,906 readings per module per second. And that is only available with the USB interface module as well as the ethernet interface module version 2.0. Now this is a dynamic mode example real quick. This is with the USB interface module. And you have 16 probes checking a spinning shaft like what you see here. Now here, each particular module connected to a probe is outputting 3,906 readings per second. So really what you're having output 
uh, to the computer through the USB interface module is 3,906 readings times 16 modules or about um, 62,496 readings uh, per second. So it is a high speed interface network. Now there's a few other modes as well. One is called read burst. This is one high speed synchronized reading of all the modules on the network. So it's like one simple dynamic reading in, it, in, a, in essence. There's also what we call buffered mode, and that's where the module can store up to 3,000 readings and then output on command. Um, this is a, basically an old mode that was used before computers were as capable as they are now for taking in a high amount of readings, um, but it's still a mode that is available. Then we have difference mode, where, believe it or not, your orbit module is actually tracking the maximum and the minimum readings, and then they can be extracted on command. This can be used for a TIR type application. So this shows the read modes for each um, basic interface, the USB interface module, the Ethernet interface module version 2.0, the RS-232 interface module, as well as the wireless. And as you can see, the USB interface, as well as the Ethernet, have the capabilities of just about all the different measurement modes. Um, but the RS-232 and the wireless interface module, uh, basically due to the properties of the connections, uh, do not have the capabilities of dynamic, basically. So now this is part A, where again we'll discuss the Orbit Support Pack, the Orbit Suite, and connecting interface modules. The first thing you will want to do, of course, is download the Orbit Support Pack for Windows. For that, you'll want to go to solartronmetrology.com and then highlight your mouse over Service and Support. Scroll down to Drivers and Software, and then towards the bottom of the page, you'll see here Orbit 3 Support Pack for Windows. This is also where you can download the Orbit 3 Excel add-in, as well as the wireless support pack for Windows, which supports a single channel Wii gauge. So once you have installed the Orbit support pack for Windows, one of the things the software pack should do is actually install an icon on your desktop, namely the Orbit 3 Suite. In addition, it will also install it if you click on the Windows icon on the lower left-hand side. It should also show up as a folder under your list of softwares, Orbit 3 Suite here. So we're just going to open this. So once you open the Orbit 3 suite, you actually have uh, three main tabs up top. Uh, you have utilities, which we'll discuss in a second. Then you also have manuals. And these are uh, PDF manuals of all the different um, Orbit components available, as well as manuals for software. Then the third tab is uh, different programming examples. So for example, here, if you're planning to do um, an Orbit 3 based program under C Sharp. This is an example here. Okay, so now we are back at the utilities page for the Orbit Suite. And this is actually divided into four sections, uh, network utility, configuration, diagnostics, and software updater. Um, up here, we have an Orbit library test. Um, this is actually just a quick macro program uh, with all the different Orbit library commands. We'll show you that in a second. Also, there is a link to Orbit GCS if you have that installed on your computer. Then you have over here, you have several configuration buttons. Um, you have the Orbit 3 ACS configurator. This is where if you have an SI100, SI200, or SI400 system, but you don't want to set it up on the little keypad on the main module, you can actually use this configurator to do it instead. There's also the Orbit 3 gateway configurator. This is for the Modbus interface module which is an interface module where you are connecting to a Modbus-based PLC over RS-485 serial. Then we have the PIM utility. This is for the protocol interface module. And this, of course, is for the gateway into uh, Profinet, Ethernet IP, um, EtherCAT, as well as other PLC protocols. You also have Orbit 3 registration. This is for registering an RS-232 interface or the Ethernet TCP interface. We will show you that in a second. Then you have the WCM configurator. That is the wireless connection module configurator. Um, so that is when you intend to connect a single channel Wii gauge or a multi-channel Wii gauge and run it through the orbit network. You would actually use this here. You also have a Wii gauge multi-channel maintenance tool that of course is fairly self-explanatory. Then you have the AGM utility. This is where if you have an air gauge module, this is where you, and you have 
you know, your air gauge tooling, this is where you would set it up. For the Orbit 3 Reporter, this basically gives a diagnostic of the interface modules and all the different um, digital probes and modules that you have hooked up to the network. You also have the Orbit 3 Network Power Calculator. Again, this is for the power supply interface modules. And then you have the RS-232 Interface Module Helper. This is for if you're using the RS-232 Interface Module. Lastly, we have the Orbit 3 Updater. The updater is basically on uh, every module is a little piece of firmware, just like every computer has software. This can be used to actually update that firmware in case we add more features or perhaps need to fix a software bug. Lastly, we do have the Orbit 3 Confocal updater. Um, Orbit Confocal isn't actually obsolete, but we do have products in the field and occasionally we do need to update the software. The next step we will want to take is to, of course, connect an interface module to our computer. For the USB interface module, that's, it is actually pretty simple. You just plug it into a USB port. You should hear it make a noise. And then give it a few minutes just for the firmware to upload to the computer. Now to connect to the wireless interface module, you will first need to set the WIM up with the Bluetooth on your computer. For that, you will want to click the icon in the lower right hand side of your screen and then click the Bluetooth icon. Highlight add a Bluetooth device and then go. Under here, of course, click Add Bluetooth or Other Device, click Bluetooth. Then it should pick up, and just like other Orbit Digital modules, um, the numbers that you will see there will match the serial number on the module itself. Now, one thing it might do is ask for a password, which will be 61736. Otherwise, it will automatically pair it. So click Done. So now if you want to set up an Ethernet interface module or an RS-232 interface module, you will want to go back to the utilities page and then click Orbit 3 registration. Make sure you have your interface module plugged into your computer or have your Ethernet interface module plugged into a router. So first I have a USB interface module plugged into my computer and as you can see for the serial port registration it virtually set up a COM port for the USB adapter. If you have an RS-232 interface module that will be listed up here and that will get and that will set up a COM port as well. Then down here here is the Ethernet module registration. Here is the IP address, uh, the MAC ID that you will also see on the Ethernet IP interface module as well. Another thing you can do as well, if you click custom, you can actually create your own IP address by just clicking here and then entering your own particular configuration. Now, if you are looking to build your own software, uh, there are multiple materials and programming examples in which you can do so. So if we click the manuals and then click Orbit Library UML, this brings up the different objects like we discussed before. Like here you see the Orbit server, Orbit networks, and then here's all the different commands such as dynamic capable, difference mode, interface speed that you can use. An example, Orbit difference, Orbit buffered. Then if we scroll down and go over, here's the Orbit module object. And again, further commands in terms of dynamic capable, reading in units, last read burst reading that type of thing and then if you go to the orbit library code reference this gives a full listing of all the different codes and then you can just type in a keyword to find such as read burst like here's read burst data property or read counts field what you also have is a multitude of programming examples here so for example here is an orbit library test project so if you open visual studio What you have is a sample project of the Orbit Library test. Click Properties, Assembly Info, as well as References. So for example, Module EIOM, Module Presets, as well as a multitude of others. 
So there's not only an Orbit library test project, but also an example for Visual C++, C++ Com, and C Sharp. So for, and then there's the actual program that's used to build it. So this is the C Sharp example. There's also an Orbit 3 Excel Com example. And here it gives some basic instructions on how to use the example workbook. There's a connect, choose an orbit network, module identity and reading error. And then if you want to see the actual code for this, just hit alt F11. And that is all on display here. Now that concludes part A of the training. For part B, running orbit library test, feel free to click the I in the corner or just stay tuned as this should be the next video in the training playlist.